And there came a time known as the third millennium, a time when the people of the earth were ravaged by disease, pestilence, and poisons, a time when the horsemen of the apocalypse ran the multinational corporations, a time when America's citizens were waking up to a future of no money and no jobs, a time when a special man came forward a man that your American taskmasters did not want you to see or hear. A man whom they took prisoner and hid away. A man whose name is Yahweh Ben Yahweh. For telling people the truth, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was taken prisoner by the minions of darkness. For giving people hope, Yahweh Ben Yahweh was led away to Golgotha. This is the continuing story of the past and of the future, about good and about evil, about your life and what it will become, a story that tells why the so-called black man of America had to suffer for over 400 years. A story of what will happen to the so-called black man if he returns to the laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments of God, Yuhei Wavhe. Olam, Olam shall, shall Yuhei Wavhe. Wavhe. The universe, the universe of, of Yuhei Wavhe. Wavhe. Brought, to Brought to you by, by the nation. nation of you working, working for you and, you and your future. future. Good or evil, life or death. This is your choice in this, the year 6001, the year of judgment. Shalom and welcome to the universe of Yahweh. My name is Josiah Israel, and I am your host. For over seven years now, we have been discussing some of the things the Bible said would occur in the Day of Judgment. We warned you that the weather was going to change and that the powerful forces of nature were going to bring terrible destruction upon America and the world, and that it was going to get worse and worse and worse. And it has. We alerted you that violence in the public schools was going to increase. And it has. We showed you in the scriptures that forewarned of wickedness in high places. And we are witnessing today gross misconduct and serious crimes being committed by some of our highest elected officials. What lies ahead for America and the world is nothing less than the proliferation of deadly diseases and plagues as foretold in the Bible. But there is hope. The Bible tells us that at the end, the Messiah would be revealed. And at that time, he would save the righteous from this impending destruction. That one, the Messiah, is Yahweh ben Yahweh. So we invite you to join us in the universe of Yahweh as the Messiah is revealed. For 6,000 years, we have been suffering at the hands of rulers who transgress the laws of yud heh wav -Heh and teach all people throughout the earth to transgress the laws of yud heh wav -Heh. In order to have peace, love and harmony upon the earth, we must return to keeping the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of yud heh wav -Heh. All of us have been taught that the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do not count today. In this series, we will show you that the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do count, and that if we govern our lives according to these commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of God yud heh then we will 
have peace and goodwill upon the earth forever. We invite you to study along with us. However, in order to do so, you must have the following tools. A King James Version of the Bible, several dictionaries, the New Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, a set of encyclopedias, Hebrew and Greek lexicons, a thesaurus, and a synonym finder. Shalom. My name is Ben Kayo Bethel Yisrael. This is the first of our new series on commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes. The basis of this series will center around what the commandments are, who gave the commandments, to whom the commandments were given, how long they are to be obeyed, and the blessings and curses of keeping or not keeping them. The first of these we will discuss is commandments. Some of you may be asking, why are they going back to those old laws? They don't count no more. The purpose for the coming of the Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, this day is not to destroy the law, but rather to fulfill both the law and all that the prophets have spoken, which is verified in Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, which reads, Think not that I, Yahweh ben Yahweh, am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. <laughs> Yahweh ben Yahweh is here teaching us that we must fulfill all the laws of Yahweh. And he is also bringing back to our remembrance the covenant that Yahweh our God made with us that is binding even until this very day, according to Deuteronomy chapter 5. Verses 2 and 3, which reads, The Lord Yahweh, our God, made a covenant with us in Horeb. The Lord Yahweh made not this covenant with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us here alive this day. Notice that this covenant was not made with our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel but rather with us, their seed, who are alive on earth this day. You may ask, what is a covenant? According to Webster's Universal College Dictionary, copyright 1997, page 187, covenant is defined as the conditional promise made to humanity by God as revealed in Scripture. Conditional means something demanded as an essential part of an agreement. A promise is an assurance that something specified will be done. Through the scriptures in the Bible, Yahweh ben Yahweh is revealing to and assuring humanity that in order for Yahweh to keep his promise to us, we must fulfill that which he demands of us to keep all of his laws, which is the essential part of the agreement. One such conditional promise is written in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 and 2, which reads, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, Yahweh, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, now this is the conditional promise that the Lord thy God Yahweh will set thee on high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God Yahweh. The essential part of this conditional promise is that we hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord our God, Yahweh, to observe and to do all his commandments, which he commands us this day. In order for Yahweh to fulfill his promise, we must be obedient to that which he commands us to do, 
which is in accordance with Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 11, which reads, Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I, Yahweh, command thee this day to do them. When we shall have fulfilled our essential part of the agreement that we made with Yahweh in Horeb, then he will fulfill all the promises he made to us this day. Today's program shows us that the laws of Yahweh do count until even this very day. Next week, we will dispel one of the world's greatest myths, and that is the commandments were first given to Moses. We will show you that the commandments were not given to Moses first, but rather to Adam in the Garden of Eden over 6,000 years ago, which was before Moses. I bear witness to you today that the Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, is here. I bear witness to you today that the Mahdi is here. I bear witness to you today that Shiloh is here. I bear witness to you today that the great light is here. I bear witness to you today that the Grand Master of the Celestial Lodge, Architect of the Universe, is here. I bear witness to you today that the Enlightened One is here. I bear witness to you today that the One all religions have been speaking of for almost 6,000 years is here. Thank you for listening and join us next week as we continue our discussion on the commandments of Yahweh. Shalom. Welcome to Exodus. Release our God to us. It was prophesied that when the Son of Man appears, there will be wars and rumors of wars, pestilence and disease, a time of great and terrible natural disasters. This is Judgment Day, and yud heh wav -He is plaguing and judging this world. His plagues are greater in America because a few High-ranking individuals in this country have judicially murdered yud heh wav -He, Beit Nun Sofit yud heh wav -He, put him in prison, continue to persecute him, and refuse to let him go. Plagues are demonstrations of the mighty works of yud heh wav -He. he uses them to bring down and humble any nation that ignores his divine laws and order. Extreme weather events have increased dramatically in this country. Yudhe Wafe is turning what we once knew as traditional weather patterns upside down. These adverse weather conditions have disrupted the entire agricultural production of America. Once upon a time, this country was known for its ability to produce a surplus of qualitative goods and services. However, serious food shortages are emerging in America, and each day the reality looms that the United States is hard-pressed to supply food for its own people. What is wrong with this picture? Is a nation so great as America facing famine? The most unthinkable of all thoughts for most Americans is that food shortages or widespread hunger could occur in America. We assume that we will always have an abundant, never-ending supply of food. 
Famine in America, it is a frightening possibility. Famine occurs when there is evidence of a severe shortage of food. It happened in the past. Let us read Genesis chapter 47, verse 13. And there was no bread in all the land, for the famine was very sore, so that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. Yudhe Wafe alone possesses the power to call for famine. It is under his divine control. Yudhe Wafe calls for a famine as judgment, as a warning, as a correction, or as a punishment. Can we avert famine in America? Yes, we can. And Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sofit Yudhe Wafe, holds the key. However, until Yudhe Wafe, Beit Nun Sofit Yudhe Wafe, is set free, the present course of natural disasters worldwide shall continue to get worse and worse and worse. Shalom, and we'll see you next week on Exodus. Release our God to us. Is worthy. Who is worthy to open the book? Who is worthy to open the book and loose the seals thereof? And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one likened to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the pass with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. At the end of time of evil rule, the Anointed One, the Messiah, shall appear. In 1979, Yahweh Ben Yahweh came to Miami and became the spiritual leader and founder of the nation of Yahweh. Although he took a vow of poverty, in seven years he guided the nation to amass a $250 million empire. Under his direction, the nation of Yahweh has grown to encompass disciples, followers, and supporters in over 1,300 cities within the U.S. and 16 foreign countries. Yahweh Ben Yahweh is bringing about changes in the lives of individuals and is giving the world the keys to success in life politically, economically, educationally, socially, and spiritually. This series is entitled, The Messiah Revealed. First, let us get an understanding of the meaning of these words, the, Messiah, and revealed. In the Webster's Ninth New Collegiate Dictionary, copyright 1989, page 1222, it states that the is used as a function word to indicate that a following noun or noun equivalent is a unique or a particular member of its class. The is also used as a function word to designate one of a class as the best, most typical, or most worth singling out. According to the Random House College Dictionary, Revised Edition, Copyright 1988, page 839, the word Messiah is defined as, one, the promised and expected deliverer of the Jewish people. Two, Jesus Christ, regarded by Christians as fulfilling this promise and expectation. 
The Jewish people also called Jews is a euphemism or substitute name for Israel, Hebrews, or Israelites. Jesus Christ is also a euphemism or substitute name for Yahweh ben Yahweh, the Messiah. We realize that these are very bold statements. So, let us give you the facts behind such statements. The Guinness Book of Records, 1993 edition, page 387, states, and I quote, The newest letters added to the English alphabet are J and V, which are of the post-Shakespearean use about 1630, end quote. If you subtract 1630 from 1998, you will get 368. Therefore, this documents that the letter J is only 368 years old. The chosen people of the God of the Bible are called the children of Israel, Israelites or Hebrews, and they existed thousands of years ago. Therefore, the definition given for the Messiah in reference to the Jewish people or Jews and Jesus Christ are false, considering the fact that the letter J is only 368 years old. Contrary to these facts, Satan has deceived the whole world to believe that Jewish people or Jews and Jesus Christ are the true names for Hebrews and for Yahweh ben Yahweh the Messiah. In essence, by definition, the Messiah is a unique or particular person who is designated as one of a class, as the best, most typical, or most worth singling out. The Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, is the promised and expected deliverer of his people, the children of Israel. Who are the children of Israel today? The children of Israel are the seed of Abraham. Genesis chapter 14 verse 13 tells us that Abraham was a Hebrew. According to Genesis chapter 15 verse 13, Yahweh told Abraham that his seed would be in bondage in a strange land for 400 years. The only people who have been held in bondage for over 400 years in a strange land are the so-called blacks of America. Thus, the children of Israel are the so-called blacks of America. History shows that we were freed physically in 1865, but mentally we have never been freed because we have never been given back that which was taken from us, the true knowledge of our God, history, culture, language, name, and land. Not having this knowledge has destroyed us spiritually. So, we are the only people in need of restoration and who qualify for deliverance today. Therefore, the Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, is fulfilling the promise and the expectation of the present day Messiah, who is the deliverer of the true Hebrew people the so-called black man of America. The word revealed means to make known something hidden or kept secret and to expose to view. In this series, The Messiah Revealed, we will be making known and exposing to view that which has been hidden and kept secret about the Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh. We will also be showing you that he is the unique and the particular person who has been designated as one of a class and as the best, most typical, or most worth singling out as the Messiah. In addition, we will be showing you that he is the one who was promised and expected to come to deliver his people, Israel, from breaking the laws of Yahweh. Also in this series, we will be bearing witness that the Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, is here in the flesh as prophesied in 1 John chapter 4, verse 2, which reads, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, Yahweh. 
every spirit that confesseth that Yahweh ben Yahweh is come in the flesh is of God Yahweh. So, as we begin the Messiah reveal, we want to confess that the Messiah is here on the planet Earth in the flesh and in the person of Yahweh ben Yahweh. Remember that this is the morning of the third day, and I shall rise again. I am the resurrection. It, all of prophecy tells you that I shall rise again. It's all about that. Luke chapter 2, verse 34. No doubt about it. Again, I love you forever. Bless you forever. I remind you once again, my associates are children of the light. <laughs> that just brings uh, laughter to my heart, to my soul, to realize that at last, I have those of you that love peace. And I only want to be in the presence of those of you that love peace. I love you forever. Shalom Aleichem. The letter J did not exist before 1630. Therefore, Jesus Christ is a euphemism or substitute name for Yahweh ben Yahweh, the Messiah. As the Messiah is revealed, there will be further revelations for you, and as you come to understand and learn the commandments, laws, judgments, and statutes, you will find heaven on earth and life everlasting. We thank you for joining us in the universe of Yahweh. And now, we'd like to invite all of you to pray with us as we turn to the east with outstretched hands and say our prayer to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew. Let us pray. Tefillah, Ave Nu Shabbat Shemayim, Yikar Deshemeyaka, Tavo Malkuteyaka, Yia Sever Zonka, Kiva Shemayim Kain Baaretz, Et Lekum Kukainu, Tain La Nu Hayom, Uslak La Nu, Al Kartienu, Kimosha Sol King, Gamanak Nu, La Koteom La Nu, Vea Tefie Nu, Lede Nisayom, Kim Kal Se Nu, Min Hara, Killer Ka, Hamumlaha, Veha Givera, Veha Tiferet, Leolame, Olamin Sila. We thank thee, O Yahweh, O living and eternal King, who has so mercifully restored our souls within us. Sila. Praise Yahweh, and always remember that the Father Yahweh and His Son Yahweh bin Yahweh love you, and your host loves you too. Shalom Aleichem. To order the companion book to the series, The Messiah Revealed, call 1-800-967-PEACE. That's 1-800-967-7337. And when you call, ask about the special discount on the removal of Wav, the divine mark of protection by Yahweh ben Yahweh. Videos of this program are available. When ordering, please refer to the program number on the screen. You can now access the divine mind of Yahweh ben Yahweh on the internet at the address on the screen. <laughs>